So the first topic that we're exploring is called health and truth. Now, I've already said earlier um, that the biggest threat to public health today is not the coronavirus or the Delta variant. Uh, can this lack of critical thinking be dangerous for public health? Now, I had a wonderful comment from Rudolph uh, on one of my recent videos that I'd like to address live uh, today. Um, the, the comment reads, Edward Z, we allow teaching in school a schism between religion and science. And instead of teaching the fundamentals of finding truth, and he pointed me towards a philosophical argument known as the Munchausen trilemma. Now, Munchausen states that scientifically, we can never prove that anything is true. Any attempt at proof falls into one of three different types of like pseudo pseudo truths. Uh, and applied to the question of, like, let's use an example, like the question of what makes us happy, for example, which I'm going to try to apply, uh, apply that. Okay, so one possibility is it leads to in, an infinite loop. We're happy because we're around people that are happy, but it's just like, what, what is happiness? The second is infinite proofs. Well, if I receive X, that'll make us happy. And then if I elect this person to government, then that will make us happy. Or we'll be happy when we achieve some particular type of goal. So that's the, the second one. And then the third is dogma. So we're happy because we know that God has a plan for our lives. Now, perhaps the, the schism between science and religion that we aren't taught in school is that they're both tools to get towards the truth. For example, a single scientific study can skew our view of the truth, and social media can put us in this realm of infinite loops or echo chambers uh, or infinite proofs, like, for example, like trolling. Oh, I don't believe you. Oh, fake news. Um, when religion is no longer a mystery, then what we see on the internet is perceived as the truth. Like this is the fake news example. Uh, then we're, of course, in the realm of like submitting to dogma. And that dogma could, doesn't have to be religious. It could just be we're submitting to a, a dogma. But, and this is an important part, if we continue to explore science, then meta studies can get us closer to the pragmatic truth. So what is pragmatic truth? It's just like the, the truth that is good enough for us to live our lives. We may not know with 100% certainty that all of these things are true, but it's good enough that you should change your behaviors, right? So uh, masking is another one. Like we, we don't know like 100%, but it's good enough that it can be treated as a pragmatic truth because there's meta studies on this. There's not just one person who studied this. Many people have studied this exact topic. In the same way, if we spend more time to question theology, we will more clearly see how those lessons apply to our everyday contexts. And so it is in this exploration of the, the truth, like what is the truth, that we start to really go deep and we start to actually get closer. We use these tools the way they were intended. So those, for example, in, in the faith side, those starting in the faith, they're referred to as inquirers. Inquirers, right? Like they don't refer to them as, oh, you're, you're candidate. No, no, no. They, they refer to them as inquirers. Uh, the sacraments themselves are referred to as mysteries. So faith, in this case, calls us to be shepherds and not sheep. And I've always interpreted this to mean that faith calls us to be scientists. To not accept a truth at face value and to explore and think critically about what we see, especially on the internet. And so what does this mean? This, this means learning to, learning to many diverse perspectives. Sometimes when you hear all of the different perspectives, that becomes part of you constructing like what is true. Uh, sometimes when we go to Snopes as a, a solution of like, okay, this, is, this might be fake news, let me go and check it. Then, then you find out, not looking at a single study, but maybe looking at meta studies that 
are repeated and you start to understand like, oh, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer to the truth, which is really our objective here. Uh, and I see this as like, nor normally we see them as divergent, like, oh, like people are exploring like, oh, obviously they, they must be in conflict, but can, I hope this, this is more clear in this explanation that religion and science are both tools towards getting to the truth. And these, it is in the deeper exploration that we discover it. It is not in this surface level, this lack of critical thinking uh, that is very prevalent today where the problem lies. It is, is the lack of critical thinking in general not just about science, but also about faith as well, uh, that is resulting in very like different or very extreme beliefs that may be out of context. Like if I took like one phrase like from a biblical text and then I, I interpret that to be the truth, well then I'd be missing all the context of like what are the life of the people who lived in that time. <laughs> I'm not really getting towards the truth. And so we need much more these days to move towards a a type of truth that, like this exploration of truth that gets us closer. So that's the the trilemma. Oh, I didn't have a chance to show the uh, the trilemma. So when it comes to uh, the Munchausen trilemma on truth, uh, I mentioned there's the infinite loop, the infinite proof. And of course, there's the, the dogma. But it's only, and none of these are perfect. The, it is in the exploration, it is in going deep uh, with each one of these that we start to discover what the truth really is. Uh, and so it's something that I'm, I think that this is important. I think this is important uh, for our public health. I think it's important for so many aspects of our, 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 our faith as well. And so I put these two things together because I feel that both of them, um, both of them are, are what's needed in order to really get us closer to a, a view that is like backed up by science, backed up by proofs, right? And also backed up by our faith. And so uh, it is an interesting, it's an interesting concept, uh, but I think that more, more than just the, the virus itself, it's people's behaviors, it's people's attitudes towards, well, I just like, I believe these things, not necessarily because they're true or there's a lot of studies about it. <laughs> That's not how they base their decisions. They're basing their decisions sometimes on, it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient for me. And I don't want that. I don't want to hear that. 